Coming up on Mountain News this morning, we hear yet another story of a heroic rescue during the historic flooding our region saw in July. And several Kentucky school districts step up to help students in our region return to class later than usual because of the flooding. Dedicated to Eastern and Southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Hi, Jim Freeman along on Mountain News This Morning for a Friday at 5.35 a.m. Friday for me, uh, Brandon Robinson. This is, uh, what, a Monday and a Friday for you all. Yeah. Kind of rolled in one, I guess, huh? Day this week, but again, glad to be here with you. Glad you're here with us, and glad you are here with us as well. So hopefully we can get you out the door on a fairly calm note, but it is foggy out there, so be aware of that. 61, or actually down to 59 outside the WIMT studios. I was thinking about uh, over toward the London Corbett Airport there, but 59 here outside the WIMT studios in Hazard, dew point 57, so not too bad out there. Feels like 59. Visibility at the airport. Now remember, the airport is outside of town nine miles but we know from looking at the camera right there it's near zero visibility this morning so be careful traveling 59 also in jonesville 57 clintwood and monticello those are our two cool spots 59 also in Irvine. everybody else is in the 60s this morning with 65 in jackson being one of the warmer spots dew points not bad at all look at clintwood 48 degrees over there for a dew point so that's not bad so we're going to continue to see that be Pretty cool as we head deeper into the daytime hours today. We're going to continue to see maybe just a little bit of heat come. Maybe some sunshine for the next six hours. But by lunchtime, we're already close to 80 degrees. And it only goes up into the low 80s before clouds increase and some rain chances come back into play this afternoon. Jim? Okay, Brandon, sounds good. Three weeks after historic floods swept through our region, stories of heroic rescues are being told. One Whitesburg couple was saved from their home as five feet of water poured in. They say it was a Facebook post that may have saved their lives. Emily Bennett has the story. Sitting along the riverbank in Whitesburg was Bob and Debbie Smith's forever home. We pretty much had everything renovated except for the three bedrooms. For nearly three decades, floodwaters never came past their backyard until three weeks ago. So it was just like one big wide river. Bob walked outside around 6 a.m. seeing the river at its banks. Nothing that it hadn't been before. Thinking nothing of it, he took a shower. And when I came back out, I looked out the back door again, and it was already at my back steps. So it had rose, risen that fast. Soon, the water was coming up through the floors. Everything was just floating and banging against your legs. The refrigerator turned over. And at that point, it's like, I don't really care if I grab anything or not. His wife, who uses a wheelchair, unable to fight the current, rushing through their home. We could have gotten out at one point, but you know, I couldn't, I couldn't leave her behind. So we put out a cry for help on Facebook, and they went to the front porch to wait as the water rose. But I just had to push her down by her shoulder so she didn't float away. The water reaching Debbie's chest. We got out right before it got that high, or we wouldn't have gotten out either, because that would have been over some of our heads. Soon, help arrived. A group of men fighting through the rushing waters to reach them. Byron was paddling. My wife tells everybody he was paddling like a madman, you know. Taking them first by boat, and then taking Debbie to the hospital on a side-by-side -side once they made landfall. We're very grateful for them. They're like superheroes. Bob says through every moment, he was never afraid. I don't know if it was, if I was being naive or if it was my faith. I hope to think it was my faith. But now he's left cleaning up. Decades of memories scattered around him, caked in mud. I had uh, probably 100 videotapes of my kids back when they were little. Trying to piece back the life he once had. We had no bills. Now I'm going to have to, I have flood insurance, but I only get $32,000. That's, that's a good starting point. In Whitesburg, Emily Bennett, WYMT Mountain News. Smith says he's giving away the double wide for someone to move and renovate, and then he'll buy a new one to put back in the same place. A teen in Knott County recently went on a mission to help return some precious items to their rightful owner. While Brady Sandlin and his dad were cleaning up flood debris, Brady found the jewelry box with rings still attached. They were able to find the owner through Facebook where she saw a post about the rings and little did they know the rings meant more than they thought after learning the owner had lost her home down Troublesome Creek. Well, you kind of give it a little different look because you don't think about what it could mean to people or anything. And once you find out the true story, then it, then it kind of hits you and realize you just did a good thing. 
Brady and his parents met with the owner of the rings, Cheyenne White, and made sure she got them back. Most Kentucky students are back in the classroom, but for several districts in eastern Kentucky, they're still trying to get a new school year started. In Knott County, the start date has been pushed back because of the flood damage in some of the schools. District leaders say they're relying on other schools to help get them ready. Samantha Valentino explains how other schools are helping. Knott County is one of many school districts forced to push back their start dates because of flood damage. Edmond Elementary got around two foot of water, not central, got four to eight inches. The uh, vocational school had um, around three feet in the classroom area. Their new start date is September 19th, but to get their schools ready for opening day, they need help from fellow school districts. For our school system to reach out to the school systems in Eastern Kentucky is the right thing to do and the first thing we thought of. Corbin Independent Schools are collecting books to help Knott County Schools rebuild their libraries. Um, she was able to contact and ask about what are the immediate needs. And uh, we reached out to our community and sent out information and were able to raise $2,000. In Bracken County, they've donated everything from paper towels to 100 school desks. And the community came out with, with uh, cleaning supplies. It wasn't just a few things. We had pallets of things. We had large uh, items. It was something that was truly amazing. Not County Superintendent Brent Hoover says their September 19th start date wouldn't be possible without the generosity of so many school districts. No words can express uh, the gratitude that we have here in Knott County for the support that we have uh, observed over the last few weeks. Um, it's just it, it, and it's heartfelt. These people come in and they give their all. In Corbin, Samantha Valentino, WKYT. Many celebrities and well-known Eastern Kentuckians have gotten involved in efforts to help out people across the region. That list includes college athletic teams, as well as singers Chris Stapleton, Tyler Childers, an American Idol winner, and Louisa native Noah Thompson. Noah talked with our sister station WBKO recently and mentioned the works he's been doing to help a woman whose home had had to be gutted once the waters receded. Uh, we were we were helping clean up this woman's house that literally had been completely underwater. Um, everything she had was basically ruined. Um, we were ripping subfloor up. Uh, I mean, completely just remodeling her house, just about ripping everything up that was completely ruined. Her entire hillside had fell off, and it was in her driveway. You know what I mean? She couldn't even get in her driveway, so it's just really sad. Noah will be performing at the State Fair in Louisville next week and at Hazard's Black Gold Festival next month. Just ahead this morning, a group of singers battled out to earn the official title of Queen of Christmas. That's on the way next. Bye. Oh, there you go. High school football kicks off in the mountains tonight. I'll tell you why you might need a rain jacket for it here in about three minutes.